So I'll start the recording. And uh, we're going to work on 4.4. Okay. Um, last night, I posted the first six practice problems for the test. And the test is not until the end or not until for you guys, I think January 29th, I think for virtual kids. So um, not as big a hurry on that, except that I would not dilly dally around too much because those practice problems at least start looking at them, at least start looking at the practice problems this week, maybe this weekend. Uh, and then we're going to communicate on practice problems back and forth through Facebook. Uh, Shania, you're now, you're now on the Facebook, which is good. So the practice problems is that you get a lot of bang for your buck there. You don't get immediate credit for it, but you will get it in your notes that you'll take, that you'll write a piece of paper, you'll turn those in and uh, you'll get it on the test. So today we're gonna to just concentrate on 4.4. Today we were supposed to start oscillations, um, which I admit oscillations, you know, what the heck are oscillations doing here? Why do they don't fit in? I mean, we talk about photons, but why would we talk about oscillations? Because to be honest with you, it's hard to insert, until you start talking about torque, it's hard to insert circular world into linear world. And since everything gets pushed back, pushed back, pushed back, if I don't insert some, an oscillation, simple harmonic motion is a component of circular world, which I will show tomorrow, which I will show now Friday. Um, so we were going to talk about that today, but because that's just too hard of a subject to try and get through without having kids in person. Uh, we're just gonna do work on 4.4, which turns out uh, it wasn't bad. We had some actually pretty good discussions about it. So uh, we're gonna discuss that now and I'll just hit the highlights. I told them that you all would be doing the best of uh, from, this, from the discussions we had. And this is the one that gets recorded, so. Okay, now I see you all. Keep looking up there because that's where my camera is, which is my, where I see everything. Well, that's where my camera's here. Better look. All right, anyway, there, display. So here we go. Um, unless you have something to say. Now that, so what happened, I guess you found out by now, is that some poor sap uh, cut the line. I uh, probably fired now. <laughs> Cut the line uh, for the for the coaxial cable. The, that's fiber optics, and that is no little deal. So uh, it's not like you just go splice it. Uh, if he totally cut it in half, they're going to have to replace that whole fiber optics, which is very expensive, and it's going to go from the junction, which we don't know where, where that is. This is for all of the school. And you see those rooms with all those wires coming in. This is what, what feeds into all that. So they're gonna to have to replace all that at great expense and a lot of time. So I don't know if it'll be done. Doesn't affect you guys though. We're just gonna press on as usual at 110. Okay, so I was telling them, if you didn't hear this, we're gonna try and wrap this thing up by 140, 145 at the latest. And I want to just hit on this 4.4. Uh, we talked about one yesterday, and this is a, a good way. It's, it turns out there were some caveats this morning that kind of threw me for a loop that I hadn't, that I hadn't, I mean, I haven't discussed this worksheet in five years. I wrote this thing about five years ago, and I just always assign it as homework and just move on. But looking at it through fresh eyes, um, I saw there's some there's some questions here. So let's look at the ones that uh, like four is like ridiculously easy. Oh, and by the way, I have a I now I have a detailed key I've been working on all morning. And so I'll paste, I'll cut and paste that together. Now you all I remember for you for virtual students, 4.2 is due tonight at midnight. This is 4.4. 4.3 uh, is the rocket launch, but we'll get to that tomorrow. But 4.2 is due tonight at midnight. I'm going to post a key on that tomorrow. So give me your best shot. Submit it to Canvas. 
uh, uh, take a picture of it, submit it front and back, and submit it to Canvas by midnight tonight. All right, so four here, I think was laughably easy. Uh, let's look at, okay, here's where the controversy came in. Here's the first controversial problem. I'll do this conference Let's go to number five. So look at number five. And you try and there's no numbers here. There's no crazy units. You let me give some space here. You try and uh, figure out five. And give me a drawing. So all you're doing is you're doing a drawing. You're finding the equation to use, and then you are um, isolating whatever variable you're trying to find. So you are looking at five now. Uh, now for them, I'm gonna give them five dogs to have the whole thing done, which for you equates to 10 points. But I don't know whether I want you to submit four four yet. So don't submit it. You're submitting four two. I only want you to have to submit one paper a week. Okay, I'm not trying to overburden you. I'm just trying to make it fair with all the stamps and such. So probably if we submit this, it'll be next week. So don't worry about submitting it yet. You obviously will turn it in with your packet. You're gonna turn it in eventually. The question is, are you submitting it early? I don't know yet. I'm gonna see what else is coming up. Remember, I'm choosing one paper a week at most for you guys. All right, so an object is thrown from a tree. And it, here's the thing though, here's what makes it weird it doesn't say whether it's thrown up or down we can deal with it we can deal with it take a look so here we are we're throwing an object let's do both scenarios we throw the object up it's going to come up it's going to hit an apex then it's going to hit the ground that's scenario one scenario two is we throw the ball down so this is throwing the ball this is v naught this is where V naught Y is positive, and this is where V naught Y is negative. And it turns out you can knock them both out with one equation, V naught Y. So this one will just come straight back, straight down to the ground. Okay. So I'm gonna trade a certain height. Ah, so we're given height, uh, height. Not delta y, height. So that is, a height is always positive. Height is the absolute value of delta y. So height in both cases are is the same. That's gonna to be to our advantage here in a minute. But delta y, uh, oh, okay, 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 fair enough. Delta y in both cases is negative. You see the difference. Delta Y is from where you let the ball go to where it hits the ground. So I'm looking at two scenarios here. Uh, it hits the ground in tau seconds. So tau meaning total time. Okay, so in both cases we have tau. If you write down the variable in the drawing, it means you're given that information. Uh, but, 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 but what's the initial velocity? So we don't know V not Y. V not Y is question mark. You gotta show that question mark. Okay, there's what I consider a good label drawing. Now we have to come up with the equation we're gonna use and then figure out the isolated variable equation. All right, so give me an idea. What equation do we want? The second blue. Second blue, right? Second blue. Because now essentially we have like 11 equations to choose from. It could be blue, could be green, could be orange, could even be black, could circuit in motion. Okay, uh, so we're going to second blue. So we start, I just write the equation out. You get points for that. Delta Y equals V naught Y T minus one half G T squared. And I'm solving for V naught Y. Okay, we'll just assume everything's cool. 
uh, v naught y then is equal to delta y plus one half g t squared all over t. Okay, so that's that's in general. We're not done yet because we got to use the variables we're given. We're given h. We're given tau. Uh, okay. So. Ah, um, let's change the t to tau. That's obvious. That's no problem. Tau meaning total time. A particular time, the total time. So there's my tau. I don't like, I hate this stuff. I hate uh, having um, double decker fractions where you have a fraction in a fraction. That's just not cool. Uh, Miss Plunkett, my eighth grade algebra teacher would not allow us to do that. That was bad grammar, she would say. So this is really two delta y, I'll multiply this by two over two, plus g tau squared over two tau. That's more the purest uh, version. Okay, we're still not done because um, we have an h. We got an h, but notice something. In both cases, whether I throw that ball up or down, the H is always opposite in this case. Remember, H is the absolute value of delta Y. But in delta Y in this case is negative, but H is always positive. So, but H I notice here, H is the opposite of delta Y. So let's rewrite this so that it's H. And you go Y, okay, hold on. So we have V naught Y equals G tau squared minus 2H over 2 tau. Now that is childproof. That is a childproof. When I say child, I mean an eighth grader. Uh, that is a childproof uh, equation. Because an eighth grader, even though they're intelligent, they, they may know their algebra, but they don't know physics. And so they don't understand the importance of signs. Like any typical, if you give them the height, you say, well, this kid is four feet up in there, say 10 feet up in the tree. They're going to write in 10. You know, they're not going to write negative 10. They're not going to realize that delta Y is negative. And so if you're looking at it, this is an algorithm, right? So you're looking at an algorithm, algorithm, I think, I think that's spelled wrong. Looking at an algorithm, um, uh, let me open the chat in case you guys want to say something. You can just say it or you can chat it, I guess. Yeah, we're recording. All right, so um, an algorithm is something you want to make your algorithm as childproof as possible. And uh, you know, just plug in some numbers. If you're just plugging in numbers as an eighth grader would, um, that, that version, uh, this version of it, this version is dangerous. Not for you, right? Because you've had some experience with physics, but a innocent eighth grader is going to mess that thing up every time. So you got to give them the childproof version. Okay. And it did say H. I mean, it said height, which I'm assuming H. Okay. I like that. I'm going to take a picture of that. Then I'm going to, they want to erase it and go on to something else. Questions while I'm taking the picture. All right, let's get to another one. I definitely want to work on three of these today. All right, so erase all this now. Buffering, buffering, buffering. I think, uh, you know, the end of a soccer game, still buffering. The end of a soccer game, all the refs sit around, they have their little, and then, then you think the game's over and then, oh, well, now, now we do ref time, they add it on because, right, you know, and they did penalties and stuff. I think that's the way life should be. You should get, at the end of your life, 
all the time in your life you spent buffering, you know, watching a show or whatever on your computer, you should get all that time back in your life. That's just, that's just fair. I think I would get about three weeks back. Okay. Now let's look at uh, all of these are kind of interesting, but let's look at number nine. Number nine, definitely want to knock off nine and 10. Those are the two I guess considered hardest. Nine, let's do nine though right now. So now look at nine. Let me give you a minute. I'll set it up here. You look at nine. Okay, got to do a drawing on that. Uh, take a look, number nine. Now nine is brand new, right? The situation, because it's like what we did yesterday. It's like uh, this, it's like um, this, where we're launching a rocket, what we're gonna do tomorrow. So it's this situation. Uh, we have somebody standing back here. This time they know the launch velocity. And like in guns and bullets, they'll have muzzle velocity. They've already determined how fast uh, this, you know, this bullet comes out of this gun. So it's called a muzzle velocity. You can look it up. Um, rockets as well. We know what these Estes rockets are, or class A, B, C, D, whatever. We know what their launch velocities are. Um, and so given a certain rocket. So the same here, let's say you know the launch velocity of the rocket uh, and you're trying to figure out what angle, you know how far away this person is, you're trying to figure out at what angle should they look up to hit the apex. So it's like what we did, only we're solving for something different. Okay, so you got a little drawing here. So mm -hmm. uh, we have some distance delta x. We have the rocket taken off. And up here, it's its apex. There's the V launch. V sub L, we say. Uh, here's the person. And then their line, their their uh, point of their line of sight. Their LOS here. Dash. So LOS, and we're trying to find theta. Question mark. That's all we know. We know the launch velocity. We know we know delta x. We know how far away it is. Okay. So, um, what will be the angle at which the student looks up to see? Okay. So, which equation do we throw at this one? Oh, we already know. Already set. Theta. So we have uh, the second green. So we have v sub l equals the square root of two g delta x tan theta, okay? I'm um, trying to now solve, now all I can do is I can solve for theta. So it's like pixie sticks, gotta work your way towards us, square both sides. I got VL squared 2g delta x tan theta. They get tan theta by itself, so tan theta is V launch squared minus two G delta X. And then now I got to do inverse tangent, right? Remember that old trick? So theta then equals the inverse tangent of VL squared minus two G delta X. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Didn't you have to divide the 2G delta X, or is that? Sorry, 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 sorry. Say it again, I hadn't, didn't have you turned up. On the uh, On second bit, wouldn't you have to divide 2G oh, delta X? That's why I asked, because that just didn't look right. Uh, oh, uh, two, uh, good grief, I'm getting tired. Uh, two, two zoom points for that. So tan theta, thank you for that. I knew something I'm right about. VL squared, 
the master of algebra, 2G or delta X, thank you. So theta then equals inverse tangent of BL squared over 2G delta X, right? That looks good. Okay, thank you. And I'm going to take a picture of that. This will all go in the this will all go in the uh, key, the detail key. Save to files. Save. All right. Now let's look at number ten. You go ahead and draw up ten. Okay, draw up number 10. Get that guy out of there. Number 10. Okay, 10. Uh, you, you, you keep drawing it and I'll, I'll draw, I'll write something up here. We'll give you a nice drawing. It's at an angle. You guys are going to play this. This is a game called pinball. And, uh, Tell my wife and I met actually. I watched her playing pinball with Eskimo Joe's in Stillwater back when it was an old dive. It used to be an old beat up bar back in the 80s, early or well, late 70s. And I watched her play pinball for a while. Finally got the courage up to put my quarter up. I challenged her. She's pretty good. Okay, steel ball is hit with a spring. So we got, you know, we will work in an AP work all these problems, but we will work maybe if we have time, or maybe in June, we'll work a problem. We'll start working problems like this. Here's your ball that you pull the plunger back, let it go, you know? Okay. Uh, steel balls hit with a spring from the plunger at the start of a pinball game with what initial velocity? So we're trying to find V naught. And this is going to be a tilted X, okay? So let's put X. There. You can have tilted X. We did this before. We've had incline planes before. So V naught X then is question mark. Uh, with what initial velocity does the ball come off the plunger if it undergoes a constant particular acceleration? So we have an A here. Um, for a certain distance up the ramp for a certain amount of time. Okay, so a certain distance, that'll be delta x. So it's gonna go up this ramp some distance. Dot, 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 dot. Uh, some delta x, and then it's gonna have at a certain amount of time. So I'm not gonna call it tau, uh, but it's just t. And okay, so there we go. So now which equation should we throw at this one? Second orange. Second orange. And so we have now this 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 has a little caveat at the end. Delta x equals v naught x t plus one half a t squared. Um these are all x's, a sub x, okay. Uh yeah, I'm trying to find V naught X. So I solve V naught X equals Delta X minus one half A sub X T squared all over T. Uh, I don't like that. It's the old uh, it's Plunkett rule. So two Delta X minus A sub X T squared all over two T. Uh, Mr. Ash, yeah, yeah. How did you switch uh, delta x and v naught x like that? How did you switch that? Oh, um, what I did was okay. So I took, I essentially, okay, a couple of things. When I'm trying to isolate a variable, the standard rule in algebra, at least back in the when I learned it back in the '70s, the standard rule was the isolated variable is always on the left side of the equation. So I move, 
I did two things at once. I, I um, basically I subtracted one half AT squared from both sides, right? And then I just said, if A equals B, B equals A and flipped it so that V naught T was on, V naught T was on this side. And then, come on, man. Okay, and then I divided both sides by T. So I did really three steps at once, I apologize. Um, yeah, so look, but look back over that and uh, I'm getting nervous, I'm running out of time. So look back over that and see what I did. I think I'm right there, yeah. Then I multiplied it by two over two to get rid of that double decker fraction. Um, now, you would think we're done with what initial velocity, that equals V naught X, boom. But here's the problem. Can you child-proof this? And child-proof, I just thought of that term this morning, but child-proof is where you take an equation and a eighth grader could solve it. You take your algorithm and make it so there's no way that kid's gonna make a mistake. What's gonna be the mistake that any eighth grader is gonna make in this? Can you see it? Delta X is the difference. Delta X, no, okay, 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 okay. Look, you have to establish which way is positive, right? Normally you say to the right, and mm, you say this way is positive, to the right, Really, it's direction of motion is positive, but that we'll get to that later. So the DOM here, we've talked about DOM a little bit in here. The DOM is positive ultimately when we start solving momentum problem. Well, we'll leave it alone. DOM is positive. Okay, but what mistake? <laughs> the squared. Squareds? No, squareds okay. I left it. I, I could have. You cannot. Okay. I mean, I, I'm. You know, I'm not going to insult your intelligence, but you guys know you can't do that, right? Because there's a T. There's not a T over here. There's not a T here, so you have to leave. That's the best. It, that that is as simple as you can make that equation. Um. Do you see what mistake a kid will make? And I'll give you a hint. It has to do with the acceleration. If I told, okay, if I told, if I gave the magnitudes, if I said that the delta X, let's just throw, okay, let's try it, let's try it. Check this out. And this, I guess this is the last problem we want to do. But let's say that, that uh, I said delta X is two meters, let's keep my number simple. Let's say that T is, uh, keep it simple, keep it simple, Aski. I hate saying one though. Let's say that, let's say T is two seconds, okay, fine. And then let's say that A is three uh, meters per second squared, okay? Let's say that, Let's say we tell the kid, those are the magnitudes, an eighth grader, all right? And then they plug this in to that child, quote, child-proof equation. They're gonna do this. They're gonna say, okay, V naught X is two times two meters minus three meters per second squared times uh, four seconds squared divided by Four, four seconds. When they do this, they're going to get a negative V naught X, which tells the kid that's nonsensical. It tells the kid you're playing, you're playing pinball, and you got to shoot the ball backwards. Well, that doesn't gonna work. Anybody see the problem? Why it's not child? Why that? Why that equation is not childproof? If you're just giving them values, I'll put a big oops there. Anybody see it? For the 
the acceleration looks negative. Then who said that? Rose. All right, Rose. I'm going to give you uh, two points because not one person today has caught that. The acceleration, you go, well, look, you set the kid up. Yeah, but a lot of times in a problem, it will just give you magnitudes and assume. Like if I just give you height, you, but you got to know, oh, wait, delta Y is negative because it's falling below. Or I just say that this thing is like, say I worded this question that the ball speed is changing. The ball speed is changing three meters per second every second. So I hide, I hide the accel the true nature of acceleration in that phrase. I didn't lie to you. The ball speed is changing. Oh, I love that. Okay. Oh, watch out for this one on a test. Balls. What if I said the ball speed was changing at three meters per second? every second see that is a camouflaged acceleration without spelling out that it's negative its speed is changing i didn't say it was going up or down so you have so you being physics students you as rose did you have to infer that the acceleration is negative right if you don't you get a nonsensical answer Ah, would I be that cruel on a test? Maybe because this is this is just or this is orange kinematics, but it's the subtleties in physics that drive people crazy, and it's signs. Signs kill you. Sign, sign everywhere, a sign. Signs just, it's people don't understand the importance of signs. All right, so you're right, Rose. It's a negative three, and that would make the problem at least make sense. Okay, I'm not saying those numbers work very well, but that makes the problem make sense. Okay, that was good. I'm going to take a picture of that. So we kind of cut the head off that snake. We did, um, we did the hard ones. We did most of the hard ones. There's still some tricky ones left, but... Um, yeah, so just keeping it purely in symbols comes with its own baggage. You don't have to worry about units, gold standard, crazy numbers, your calculator, but now it's more of a pure physics. And that's what Einstein dealt with, right? Heisenberg, they dealt with pure physics, which is symbols. Okay. Um, I'm putting a real detailed key on this, but it won't be ready till Friday. Um, so that kind of makes me think that, that, that you, this is not one that you would submit. Uh, you will turn it in, but I'm not gonna give you two things to submit in a week. Oh, 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 last thing, last thing. I know I let you say, I let you go early. Last thing though, real quick. On number, how long, da, 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 da. I think number seven, I think it's that one. Number seven will require the blue quad, the seldom used blue quad. If you look on your equation sheets at side four, go about half, most of the way down to the bottom of the page. And then down here at the bottom right, you'll find the blue quad. Uh, that one, that's the next hardest problem. And I'll leave that for you. But that, because of the H issue, the H height versus delta Y, um, remember, delta Y and H may be positive, maybe the same, maybe the opposite. Uh, okay, because H is always the absolute value. But that's delta Y. So, but they're asking you to do it in terms of H. See, it says height H, even spells it out, H. So uh, they want you to use H there in the, in the uh, answer. But anyway, I'll leave that, I'll give you that warning. I'll leave that one to you. All right, so your homework is to finish this. No big rush on that. Uh, you might just want to blow it off tonight and just work on uh, other subjects or just work on the practice problems. Do, do maybe two practice problems tonight and then start asking. You guys are the best about asking questions uh, on the Facebook group. And then the, you, I, show it, I, show your, I show them your questions and you inspire 
uh, the in-person kids to ask more questions on Facebook. So ask your questions there on the uh, practice problems. We'll get those started. I'll eventually, by this weekend, I'll probably have most of the keys posted on that and help videos up by Sunday night, or because then I think I post the next set. So before the next set of practice problems are posted, all the keys for these will be up there. Okay, let me stop the sharing. Mr. Anthony? Yes. On the blue quad, on the, mm -hmm. on the V naught is plus or minus the square root. Do we use plus or do we use minus? Good question. Uh, a good question. Normally, about 90% of the time you use the plus. Uh, the negative has actual physical meaning, but it's an imaginary number, right? Because the square root of a negative number is, an, is imaginary. But imaginary numbers actually have physical meaning. Um, and that's a whole interesting question, which will take us 20 minutes to talk about. So let's leave it alone. But you pick, because we're doing, because we're doing classical physics, you pick normally the positive. There are times where both, that determinant there, whether you do both determinants are positive, and you're going to get two times. But that's like that case yesterday or day before where we threw a ball up and we said at what point, at what time is velocity 16 meters a second? It happened at two times, one on the way up and one on the way down. And that happens a lot in what we do projectile motion, like in sports, it happens a lot. Like a basketball is going over to, into a you know, three point shot. And there's two points at which two times that that basketball is at the level of the basket. Okay, so that does come into play. But normally it's just the positive one you take. Okay, because the negative one gives you a negative answer, which you can't in classical physics have negative time. But if you want to look at a negative time in imaginary numbers, look at a guy named Paul Dirac. Uh, there's a book out, I have it here somewhere, sitting on my shelf, called The Strangest Man. And it's all about Paul Dirac, uh, who PM Dirac, they call him, but Paul. Uh, he, uh, what he understood the, the, you know, you learn complex numbers. I know we're done here, but you learn complex numbers in, uh, in math and you go, what the heck are we doing with these? They have a purpose and it's quantum really. Uh, okay. So going to go, uh, see you guys tomorrow. Uh, hopefully we're back to normal schedule at school, but we're going to be here no matter what. All right. Bye.